Let's pray. Feel free to bless God out loud. We bless you, God. We praise you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you that your word says that it's in you that we live and that we move and that we have our being. Lord God, I, I thank you that as I have discovered you, I recognize that without you I am nothing and I have nothing. That everything of substance begins with you. Jesus, you are our life and our lives are hidden in who you are. Our identity is in you, and we thank you today. I thank you for the uniqueness of every single person that you've made a part of this congregation today. And now as you bring us together as one, by one spirit to worship one Lord, one Savior, we thank you, Father God, for your goodness and your plan and your greatness. We thank you, Lord God, that you're shaping our lives, Lord, so that we can, we can be more like your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, would you have your way in us today? Have your way in us. Lord, empty us of ourselves that we might be filled with you, more of you, a fresh outpouring of your spirit today for your glory. In Jesus' name, and all God's saints said, amen. amen. Let's clap to the Lord. Amen. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Raise a 
the reminder in that song to just turn to the Lord in the middle of whatever you are currently facing today instead of speaking negatively about your situation instead of worrying or grumbling we turn to the Lord and we say hallelujah father you have this right and instead, if we use praise as our weapon against the enemy, that's what it means when it says the darkness will flee because we are putting our focus on the Lord and on his word and what the word declares about our God. Amen. We have a chance to declare that today with the Lord being our way maker.
even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when. Revelation 4, 7 tells us who he is. It says, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Heavenly Father, we join together today. We have come here in one accord with united purpose to bless your name and to honor you and tell you, Father, of your greatness. Lord, we ascribe to you all glory and honor and strength. We give to you the glory due your name. And we worship you, Father, in the splendor of your holiness majesty you are so worthy God worthy is your name Lord worthy are you Lord do you feel The shadows deepen. We do. Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new?
as the Father truly loves us, He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, God, we praise you. We bless you. Lord, we declare today that you are worthy. God, we thank you for your great plans, the plan of salvation, to purchase each one of us by the shed blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you today. As we put our faith in you, we receive your grace and your spirit to dwell inside of us. Lord, we thank you for the plans that you have for us today, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future. Lord, I pray that we would see that that hope and that future are connected in the way that we choose to follow after you because you have a plan and you are directing and you're leading us into greener pastures, but are we following? We don't want to just thank you for your plan today. We want to follow you in it, step by step, day by day, moment by moment, abiding in you, Lord, so that you'll have your way in us. We just thank you for that intimacy that you want to have with each one of us today. Thank you for making us a part of this body to serve you and love you and to love one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before you sit down today, see some of you are already crouching. I would love for you to take the next 60 seconds just to greet and love on the people that are right around you, and then I'll call us back to attention in just one minute. Greet each other. If you see an unfamiliar face, say hi, introduce yourself this morning.
Well, it's a blessing to have you here this morning again. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we want to welcome you to Open Bible. My name is Pastor Andy, and uh, we want you to encounter the love of Jesus and the truth of his word today. For those of you who are watching at home, we want to greet you this morning. We love you. We have not forgotten about you. We are excited that you're tuning in today to be a part of the service, and we pray that God's love reaches you right there on your couch or bed or wherever. Just don't fall asleep, okay? Uh, this morning, you're in for a special treat. I want to introduce one of my mentors, uh, an associate pastor here at Open Bible. He is the principal of Kankakee Trinity Academy. He does an amazing job at all things. Uh, if you know Pastor Brad, he is a straight shooter. Amen. And he's going to shoot straight the word to us this morning. Would you give a great big Open Bible welcome as Pastor Brad comes? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Pastor Andy. I am totally blessed to be a part of this man's ministry. And uh, his wife, uh, they do an incredible job as, as pastors of this church. And uh, the unity that uh, is evident in the people here and the leadership here is because of the kind of leadership that he shows here. So I just wanted to say that um, while he's here, usually I'm speaking, he's not around, so I just wanted to embarrass him a little bit. I really appreciate him. I wanted to start out with something different this morning. Um, Pastor Andy's been talking about us making connections, and uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. Basically, I'm going to pick out somebody in the audience, and I'm going to say one thing about them. I'm gonna introduce I'm going to say their name, and then I'm going to give a fact about them. And then they have to find someone in the audience and do the same thing. Introduce the name, and then mention one fact about them. Okay? All right, that gives you 10 seconds to think of who you might pick. All right, I'm going to go over here. This is Mr. Dan Chapman, and he is in charge of the Bible League, International Bible League, right? Is that what it's called? All right, very good. Good morning. And I'm going to introduce my good friend, Mr. Todd Garcia, sitting all the way in the back <laughs> over here. Todd is the owner of a few businesses in town, but more than anything, he has a kind and a generous heart, and that's what I love about him. Mm, Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I will introduce um, a good friend of mine now, uh, Mr. Eric Ort. I'm sure he's going to love that, uh, that I'm bringing him into the mix here. <laughs> and Eric is uh, one of the most generous and giving guys that I know, always giving of his time and uh, always willing to participate. And um, just I, I'm always amazed at, uh, at the lengths he goes in order to uh, be able to support the organizations and the people around him. So. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to introduce Jeremiah Gadboys, my brother-in-law. Uh, he also just very generous and helps out anybody any way he can. Amen. Can I just reciprocate that back to Eric here? I mean, um, the, well, you, I'm just, you could pick your wife. I mean, yeah, that I would go, work, oh, but you can't yeah, really okay. you can't really give it back to the person oh, so that's, that's tagged back. About Eric, yeah. uh, I'm going to pick on uh, Jason Hart here, a okay. uh, friend and uh, uh, served in the military and uh, works for a local HVAC company. Mm, awesome, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to pick Dana. <laughs> uh, great woman, um, dedicated to her family, dedicated to God, mm. and uh, I just want to say good morning to everybody. Amen. Amen. Good morning, I'm Dana Fan. Um, I am going to pick Chrissy Hathaway. Mm. She's Amen. a wonderful Christian woman who works um, at KTA in the kitchen. Yes, she does. Amen. Does a good job of it, too. Hi, I'm yeah. Chrissy Hathaway. I'm going to pick my very good friend, Jen. And she's wonderful, too. She works at KTA with us and does anything to help anybody and um, is a healer for the Lord Jesus. Mm, amen. Good morning. I'm actually going to make my way this way, and I'm going to pick a very, very sweet girl of the Lord, becoming a woman, Britta Lindgren. <laughs> this girl's on fire for the Lord, and she just makes me feel joy all the time. 
Mm. The young. <laughs> I'm gonna pick my sister Emily. She's one of the most <laughs> nicest and friendliest girls I know. Oh, I Um, I'm gonna pick Stuart Hansen. He was a, a very uh, Power Ranger enthusiast when he was younger. <laughs> 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 Out of all the things. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm going to do Mr. Warden. I'll do Mr. All Warden. Right. Um, Mr. Warren has taught in youth group for many years and has been a really great mentor in my life. Mm, amen. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to introduce... One of my good friends, he's burning for Jesus. He's also three days younger than me. David Tate! <laughs> you know what? I'm going to pick somebody I haven't talked to in a long time. And he's been my friend for 30 years. And I'm talking Ooh. about Pastor... Pastor Andy. Let me, let me say something about Pastor Andy. He's, I know him since youth group. He's been a wonderful guy, and he's awesome. Yes, he is. And let me, let me tell y'all something about him, because he's, a, he's like a mentor to me. And these boys are awesome as well, and his wife. And I just want to say, you're my buddy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, good job, David. That was good. He's my manager. I, I feel like I should be carrying a belt around as I walk <laughs> into the walk into the ring. <laughs> Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about Pastor Brad because it's probably okay. time to hand it back to you. But, uh, yeah, for those of you who didn't know, Pastor Brad was my youth pastor. And so uh, we have a lot of great stories and have done all kinds of amazing things together. And I think about him all the time. And I'm super excited that you get to hear the word from him today. So appreciate him. Give him a hand. This Thank morning. you, brother. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That's a good place to stop. Right there. Amen. Thanks, guys, for, for doing that for me. I'd like to start out with a word of prayer, if I could. Father God, right now I just come to you and I just thank you for the privilege that we have to be in your house. And God, I just ask that you would just speak through me. God, I pray that there's not one thing that would come out of my mouth that isn't from you. And God, I just pray that your spirit would work in our hearts and draw us together in Jesus' name. Amen. I love the family that God has put together here. It's pretty amazing. As you know, just a few weeks ago was July 4th. We celebrated the Declaration of Independence, which was 245 years ago. During the American Revolution, the legal separation of the 13 colonies from Great Britain occurred on July 2nd, 1776, when the Second Continental Congress voted to approve a resolution of independence that had been proposed in June by Henry Lee, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia. After voting for independence, Congress turned its attention to the Declaration of Independence, a statement explaining this decision, which had been prepared by a committee of five with Thomas Jefferson as its principal author. Congress debated and revised the Declaration, finally approving it on July 4th. We made our stand against England. And over the years, many sacrifices have been made for our freedom. During the Civil War, we fought a war to keep our country together. And there was freedom for all, no matter the color of your skin. Abraham Lincoln, the president at the time, made the ultimate sacrifice. He was assassinated at the end of the war. We've been through two world wars and a lot of other conflicts as well. And there have been multitudes of deaths and sacrifices that have been made so that we can do what we're doing right now. 
so that we can be in this place and worship with freedom. We don't have to worry about the police coming and taking us to jail, to jail or prison. We can do this freely. And that's an incredible thing of amazing value. And I want you to know that there's a lot of sacrifices that are made constantly so that we can maintain this freedom. On July 4th, 1968, I had my own declaration of independence. That's when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. That was 53 years ago. And I declared my independence from sin and the devil. And ever since then, I've never looked back. And I want you to know that when you make that decision for Christ, that it'll be the most amazing thing that you've ever done in your life. It will totally change you. You can't authentically make that decision and it not change who you are and change the whole direction of all that you are and what you do in life. Jesus left the right hand of God. He came to earth, lived as a man. He was accused, suffered, beaten, and he hung on a cross for you and for me. We didn't deserve it. We didn't know him at the time. We didn't love him at the time. But he did it so that we can have relationship with him now and today. What an amazing, incredible, miraculous thing. And not only that, we get to look forward to that day where we will be in heaven with him and with all of the believers that have died and went on before us. What an awesome thing. Today, I want to recognize the sacrifices that were made that affected me specifically. As I grew up in a Christian home, in fact, I'm, I'm so happy to have my, my Uncle Dave and Judy that are here and, and my Aunt Audrey here as well. I don't think that they've heard me speak. This will probably be their last Sunday here. <laughs> but, but it's great having them. But I remember growing up and my dad working really hard. And uh, I rem he was a well driller. And, and back when he started out, basically drilling a well was taking a, a, a long, uh, heavy piece of metal. I don't even know if it's steel or iron, to be honest with you. But it was attached by the end with a cable. And then he had a machine with a tower and a pulley system. And basically, just up and down, up and down. Remember that, Uncle Dave? Up and down, up and down. And, and that's the way he would dig a well. And it usually took him about three days to, do, to drill one well, okay? And he would come home, and his hands were just full of calluses and scars, and, and his fingernails sometimes were blue because he would accidentally squish them. He would usually have two or three fingernails that were nasty at all times. And he would just work and work and work. And he would drill wells during the day, then he would eat supper, and then after supper, then he would go out and he would um, uh, go out to the building and he'd heat up some, uh, a fire really hot and then he'd stick those bits um, into the fire and then he'd pound them with a sledgehammer, making them as sharp as possible so that the next day they could drill uh, at least a little bit better than they did that day. And he would do that day in and day out. And I remember that he would be passed out on the, on the couch at night and he was listening to Moody Radio all the time. And, and we as kids, we'd walk in and we'd pull up his shirt and then we'd blow on his belly or we'd <laughs> beat it like a drum. And he'd just laugh and he'd say, hey, what you doing? <laughs> We were, he brought us to church whenever the doors were open. He taught us what was most important, and that is whatever we do for Christ 
is what we would need to live for. He would come into our rooms sometimes before bed and he'd tell us about how God has a special plan and that he loves us and he'd pray with us. I remember he would talk with people whenever he would drill wells with people and put in their pumps. He would talk about Jesus to them. He built the house that we were in and then but he didn't have much money, so he built the basement after the house was already there. I hear that could be dangerous, but that was my dad. He didn't have the money for it at the time, so he, so he di did the basement after the house was already in place. We got by on very little money, and yet he still found money to send us to a Christian school to help us when it was time to go to college. I remember that the stuff that we would eat normally was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and a hamburger helper. Right, Mom? You cooked hamburger helper all the time. And you don't know this, Mom, but there was one day I had just had enough of hamburger helper. <laughs> and, I, and I said to, to my to Brent and, and, and Trish and, and Rick, I said, that stuff smells like dog food. It's nasty. I didn't let you know, Ma, I know you would have worked me over, but that that's just was my opinion at the, t at the time. But we had a lot of that um, sacrificed, sacrificed. When it was time to go out to eat, which was every once in a long while, we'd go to McDonald's, right? Yep. Yep. When it was time for vacation, basically, we didn't have a camper, so my dad put this wooden cover over, the, over a pickup truck, and, and we would jump in, and we would, we would go to my Aunt Audrey's and, and Uncle Jerry. Uh, that were pastoring down in Florida at the time. We'd go down there. That was our vacation. Of course, we wouldn't stay in a hotel. We'd be staying at their house and sleeping on the floor and stuff like that. Uh, or we'd uh, drive to family camp, and that was our vacation. It was cool for me. I mean, it was awesome. It was fun, you know? So, so anyway, the sacrifices that we make, and hopefully your parents did that for you, so that your lives would be a little bit better. And hopefully we are doing it and making sacrifices in ways so that our kids can have things a little bit better. That's just the nature of loving your kids, right? I remember learning how to work. I remember Uncle Dave hiring us. And remember those burlap bags, Dave, that you would give us like a nickel or whatever it was if we would, if we would uh, cut those apart so you could use them in the nursery with the trees. That was our first job. We were collecting these nickels and man alive. All of a sudden, we could buy a matchbox car after about, after about a week or so. <laughs> and you know what, though? We learned the value of money. If you, if you have to work for what you get, then you understand that. And you don't think that everything's going to come to you uh, for doing nothing. And you don't think that you're entitled and that kind of thing. So that was some great things that I remember growing up. Jesus loved each one of us, and died so that the price of our sin would be paid for. I can be in relationship with God, and all I had to do was accept it. And each one of us have to make that decision for ourselves. Wouldn't you like to make that decision for your kids? Wouldn't that be cool? Hey, you're going to be a Christian whether you like it or not. You know, you, you know what? You can't do that. Everybody has to make that choice. Everybody does. Salvation is declaring your independence from sin and the devil. 
Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. You know what? When, when you sign up for the United States Army and you put your name on that dotted line, boom, you're in. All right, this is the date you're going to show up for, uh, for boot camp and make sure you're there, right? All of a sudden, things are different. My life is no longer mine. My life is theirs when you sign that, li- that dotted line. That's just the way it is. In the same way with Christ, when we accept him, all of a sudden, we are deciding we are going to be in the battle with him. And our lives are no longer ours, but are his. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. There is an enemy out there that is wanting to destroy and to kill everything that God loves and everybody that God loves. Satan would like nothing more than to have every one of us give up and turn our back on Christ and to be in hell with him someday. That's just his nature. The spiritual war that is out there, Ephesians 6, 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. There is not going to be any room for pacifists. In the army of God, it's all hands on deck. God has a purpose for you and I to touch the lives of people that are around us. And he puts us in all unique places. But God has a plan for us. So when we sign up on that dotted line uh, to go into the military, he said, boot camp's going to be right here. And you know what the first thing that they do? They cut your hair. They want everybody looking the same. And then they say, you're going to eat this, and this is when you're going to eat, and this is how much you're going to eat. And then when you get done with that, you're going to do this. And then you're going to do that. And then you're going to run. And you're going to dig or whatever it is. You're going to do this training. You're going to wear this uniform. You're going to sleep at this time. You're going to wake up at this time. It's all about discipline. Now, why is that? Why don't they just say, hey, guys, whenever you want to come over, we're just going to go have a little bit of fun and shoot some guns. Do you think that's going to work when on one day the commander says, attack? Will that work? No, no. Discipline is the key to having an army. And the only way that you're going to obey a commander in, in the face of enemy fire is when there's discipline and you've been trained to obey. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. In Acts chapter 9, there's the story of the apostle Paul, although his name was Saul here and originally. And it says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest, and he asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, and that was the name of the church back then, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Saul was hardcore. He was going to rid the world of these crazy Christians. And it says, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Can you imagine? 
all of a sudden you have this strobe light thing going on. <clears throat> he fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus who you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. He didn't even give me any options, did he? <laughs> he said, this is what you're going to do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. Can you imagine they're seeing Saul just like falling down on the ground and talking up in the sky to nobody? They heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. Okay. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into, into Damascus. And for three days, he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. You think that broke his, uh, <laughs> that broke him? And in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, you have the Apostle Paul then later talking about what it means to be a Christian. Here you go. <clears throat> Are they servants of Christ? If I am out of my mind to talk like this, or I am out of my mind to talk like this, I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Sign me up, man, right? <laughs> I want all of these things. <laughs> Being a Christian is not for wimps, okay? Being a Christian is a real deal. When you sign up for that, your life is his. And it's not necessarily going to be easy. But is it worth it? Oh, yeah, it is. There's nothing like it, especially when we get to see Jesus face to face. He needs us to grow. I love how Pastor Andy's going to be getting groups going here. And that's going to be a great place for us to be able to grow with one another. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. We need to study the word. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. Some of my favorite scripture that I enjoy reading is the book of John. I love reading Proverbs because it talks about what it means to be wise, what it means to be foolish. And when you're wise, there's blessings that follow as opposed to curses that follow you if you do foolish things. I like the epistles. When Paul wrote the epistles, he would encourage and exhort. He was just was straight out, do this, do this, and this will happen. And just really exhorted the believers. As you know, we are in a battle right now in our culture over ideas, over what is truth, what is real. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. 
I'll tell you what, as we continue to get closer to the day that Jesus comes back, we are gonna need believers that are filled with the Holy Spirit, that are not going to be intimidated by the attacks of the enemy and the lies that are out there. But not, and not that we take the truth and we beat it over people's heads, but that we love them to the truth. It says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. Right now in the United States, homosexual, homosexual marriages are legal in all 50 states. The Supreme Court said in 2015 they struck down any opposition to that. Abortions. In 2018, we had in, in America over 620,000 abortions. Evolution is taught in our government schools as though it's the truth and not a theory. I was just at a Chili's just a few days ago. I go to Chili's a lot because I'm at the airport a lot picking people up. And uh, I always sit at the bar. I'm the only guy at the bar that doesn't drink alcohol. I always have a mango tea, several of them. <laughs> and, and I had this, I had this, um, I, th I think, I'm pretty sure it was, a, it was a guy, but he was dressed in a, in a dress. And, and he just came up and he said, hi, can I be your friend? And it was just really sad because um, you not, I, I didn't even know whether to call him you know, a he or a she. Um, he said his name was Preston, and I'd talk with him for just a bit, but it's amazing how there is so many people out there that are just hurting and confused, and I want you to know that. The, the people that struggle with what, what gender they are and what gender they like, I'm telling you, these people are, are, are just, so many of them are crying out for acceptance and love. Yeah. And the, the problem is that we have allowed our, our government to give people the choice of what identity they have. So if your little girl grows, is, is three years old and says, you know, I think I'm a boy. We're not supposed to say, no, I'm sorry. God made you as a girl. And God chose that. That is an absolute. And to, to, to believe that our government is, is telling everybody that there are no absolutes. God establishes some things that they just are. Yes. Yes. They just are. And we have to be able to trust him and know that he loves us enough to, to make whatever decisions that are outside of our control, but they are for our good. And he has a perfect plan in that. Yes. There are some things that we just don't have the right to decide about ourselves. But God knows best. And we have a generation that we're giving permission to make these kind of decisions and they're growing up confused. And they're growing up depressed because they don't really know which direction to go. They don't know what to believe. And they're turning to alcohol and drugs to numb the pain. And the enemy is laughing the whole way through. And that's where it takes loving believers to step in. It really does. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. We hear that some among you are idle. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread that they eat. As for you, brothers, never tire of doing what is right. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. 
Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And they not only do they become idlers, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things they ought not to do. If you find yourself gossiping, you need to get a job. Okay? You need to find the plan that God has for you and do it. When we start having too much idle time, you ever hear that idle time is the devil's workshop? I heard that mom used to tell me that. And, and that's true. That means that we're not going about God's business that he's called us to. Romans eleven twenty nine, For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. What is the call that he's placed on you? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your word. I thank you for the encouragement that happens in the body of believers as we have an opportunity to worship you and to love on each other and, God, to encourage one another in all that you have for us, God. I thank you for the calling that you've placed on each one of us. Father, I pray that we would um, be the people that you've called us, Lord, that we would be built up in the spirit, Lord, that we would uh, get in your word. God, be led by your spirit in everything, God. And Lord, I pray that you'd go with each one today. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. God bless you.